My New Year's resolution is never to make a New Year's resolution. <laughs> I don't think that uh, the changing of the date of the year makes much difference if we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to move in and guide and direct our lives. Amen. It's not by might nor by power of our own, but it's only by the Holy Spirit that our lives are changed. Amen. However, I believe that the word that God has given me today, if we apply it, will radically and totally change our lives in the coming year. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us to receive with meekness the engrafted word. And we appreciate so much that he has given us his word. So to begin this new year, I want you to tell you that we need to remember and we need to forget. Amen. So, well, Pastor, which is it? It's both. It just, we have a tendency to remember what we should forget and forget what we should remember. Amen. And we wonder why our lives are sometimes in such emotional turmoil. And I want to tell you something, folks. A lot of the problem just depends on our old patterns of thinking. If we learn to allow the Holy Spirit to change the way we think, as Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so I'm asking God to help me to focus differently, to think differently, to focus on His Word so that my mind is renewed in Him. Amen. Do you know what? The Almighty, omniscient God has chosen to forget some things about you. Now, how can He do that? I have no idea. That's why He's God and I'm not. How can He know all things and then build into Himself the capacity to not hold things against us and not remember things against us is an incredible thing. I don't understand it. I can't figure it out. But I can tell you this much. I'm sure glad that He has chosen, as David asked Him, remember not the transgressions of my youth. And my not so youth, I'd add to that. Listen to these verses about what God has chosen not to remember about you. Psalm 103, 8 through 14. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will He keep His anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our frame. Watch this. He forgets our iniquities, but he remembers we're made out of dust. Do you appreciate that? Now, I'm really glad that the scripture says as far as the east is from the west, not as far as the north is from the south. Because people have measured the difference between the North Pole and the South Pole. And some people would go that far to bring up your past. But there's no measuring the distance from the East to the West. Isn't that awesome that the Scriptures are so accurate here? David said in Psalm 79, 8 and 9, Oh, do not remember former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily to meet us, for we've been brought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and provide atonement for our sins for your name's sake. That's the prophecy of Calvary right there. In the Psalms. How many is glad He provided a sacrifice and atonement for your sins? And He has chosen to allow your sins to be washed away by the precious blood of His Son so that they're never remembered against you again. I love that. Praise God. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am He who blots out your transgressions for mine own sake. Read this with me. And I will not remember your sins. Just in case you don't get it yet, look at Micah chapter 7. And we haven't even gotten into the New Testament yet. Who is a God like you? Pardoning iniquity. 
passing over transgression of the remnant of His heritage. He does not retain His anger forever because He delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. And somebody said, and then he puts up a sign that says, no fishing. <laughs> he chooses to forget. How many understand this comes, 1 John 1, 9, with repentance and acknowledging of the finished work of Christ on the Calvary. Amen. Doesn't just happen automatically. You've got to come to him and accept what he's done. For if we confess our sins, the Bible says, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what? God chooses to remember the good that you've done and forget the bad. Can you ask for anything better than that? How many wish all your loved ones was that way? How many know some marriages would be healed if you just do this God, the God way? If you would not focus on every negative thing, choose to forgive that and focus on the positive. All right, God remembers the good things His children has done. Listen to this, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward His name and that you have ministered to all the saints. God said, I'll never forget when you do what I've asked you to do out of the right kind of servant's heart. What, what if we would keep that in mind? How many know that when we get to heaven, those of us that are saved, hallelujah, that there is a throne that Christ will sit on where we will be judged and rewarded according to our works. Amen. He's not going to forget the good things that you've done. Somebody said, oh, it's not about works. Yes, it is. Salvation is not about works, but rewards are. Yeah. Amen. By grace are you saved through faith. It's a gift of God. Amen. And that's free. But then he goes on to say, but he's ordained us unto good works so that others can see Christ in us. And so God's not going to forget that time. You thought nobody saw it when you fed those people that were hungry. You thought nobody saw it when you bought those shoes for that kid that needed a pair of shoes. You thought nobody saw it when you was kind, when others were hateful. Let me tell you something. God has a reward waiting for you for every good deed that you do. You all remember the woman that poured the oil on Christ's head that took the alabaster box and, and both in Matthew and Mark, it says this about her. The thing that she has done will be told as a memorial for her throughout all generations. Because she gave her all in worship, God said it will never, ever, ever be forgotten. There's a man in Acts chapter 10 named Cornelius. He's a Roman soldier. Up to this point, only Jewish people have been saved. There are thousands that have come into the church, but mostly just Jewish people. And God sends an angel to him, and he says, listen to this, Cornelius, Acts chapter 10, your prayers and your giving has come up as a memorial before God in heaven. I'm going to tell you something. Someday the World War II memorial, the Vietnam memorial, uh, the Washington Monument, and all these memorials, how many know they'll be dust and ashes because there's a new earth coming? but a memorial in heaven of the mission trip you took, of the hunger you fed, of those that you helped. God said, I will never forget that. Folks, I don't know about you, but this is good news to me because the devil will convince you that God will only remember the evil you've done and forget the good because that's what people do. Amen. How many know that's the truth? You get down to pray and the devil say, God's not going to hear you. He heard that word you used last week. He knows how you felt toward your mother-in-law the other day. Yeah, he knows all those things, but how many know he's a God of forgiveness and grace and mercy if we repent and turn from those things? I want to make this clear. But aren't you glad that he chooses to remember? i tell you what, I feel pretty good about that. Now, some of you will do that for your own kids, but you won't for others. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you'll just brag on, look at that report card and those straight A's. You won't talk about that smart aleck attitude and how they back talked you and what they got into that you hope nobody finds out about because they're your kid. You know where you got that from? Your father wants to be that way toward you in heaven, but he wants you to be that way toward others. Amen. Amen. Watch this. God always, praise God, remembers his own. Where, am I there yet? Listen to this, Isaiah 49, 13. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth. Break out into singing, all you mountains, because church people won't. I added that. <laughs> Just stand there and look at the worship team. 
You know how much it means to them and some of you, especially some of you Pentecostals say you want to move a God. Why don't you move out of your seat and get up front and praise the Lord with us sometime? I just thought I'd throw that in there. Now don't clap unless you intend on doing it. Oh, Lord. Be, sing, O heavens, be joyful. That was free, didn't cost you anything. Sing, O heaven, be joyful, O earth. Break forth out in singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted His people and will have mercy on His afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Listen to this. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they might forget, yet I will not forget you I want you to hear this. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. That Roman soldier had no idea when he picked up that spike that day and drove that nail through the hand of Jesus. The only thing in heaven that's man-made, listen to this, are the scars in the body of Christ to show the price that He paid for our redemption. That day, my name was carved in the palms of His hands. I'm inscribed in His hands. And every time the Lord looks at His hands, His children that He paid the price for come to mind. Amen. Come on, give Him praise for that. I thank God. God's forgotten me or I wouldn't be going through that. No, He hasn't. Praise God. Listen to Malachi 3, 16 and 17. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord listened and heard them. How many know our little cell groups and prayer groups and fellowship in the body of Christ, we talk to one another and commune about the Scriptures. God takes notice of that. Amen. And he heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and those who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Yeah, but you don't know how rotten I've been. What a past I had and what all I have done. I want you to hear this. There's a man in the Bible that's being executed for his wicked, murderous, thieving ways. But he's being executed next to Christ. The Bible doesn't record one good deed he ever did. But the Bible said this, when the other thief began to mock him, he reproved him. He said, don't you fear God. We deserve death. But this man has done nothing. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me. Somebody just lift your hand and say it with us. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. If he would remember him, and we probably would not have given him any grace, but if Jesus would remember him, he will remember you. Amen. Praise God. I kind of got that ahead. Uh, three is God remembers the things you've done. <laughs> Fourth, it's time for us to remember some things. We need to remember the goodness of God. Folks, it all has a lot to do with what we're thinking about. Deuteronomy 4, 9, only take heed to yourselves and diligently keep yourself lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Amen? Moses gave a warning. He said, y'all have been slaves. You've been 40 years in the wilderness and it's been tough. But you're getting ready to move into blessings. Don't let the blessings cause you to forget the goodness of God. Amen. Listen to what he says in Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 12. So it will be when the Lord God brings you into the land which He swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you didn't build, houses full of good things that you didn't fill, hewn out wells that you didn't dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you didn't plant. When you've eaten and when you're full, beware. I've seen it happen over and over. 
people out of work, have financial needs, their marriage is in trouble, they'll come to church, they'll seek God. Oh God, I need you. Oh God, help me. God begins to meet the needs. God begins to bless. God gives them a job. God restores relationships. And now they're spending Sundays on the lake. Probably not today, but... <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> There's another lake that a boat won't float on. I won't talk about that. But how many know we're tending, we have a tendency to when things are good and we don't need Him? You know, I had some things happen this year that just sent me reeling. Some things that brought sorrow and shock and dismay into my life. And, and I had a tendency to just uh, fall into really deep despair. And as I began to pray about it and seek the Lord... Do you know what the Lord said to me? He said, is my relationship with you as important to you as these other relationships? How many know He can shake you up sometimes? Would you seek me like this for just a relationship with me? And I'm saying in this year coming, I want to seek for a greater relationship with my Heavenly Father. And I believe out of that, other relationships will be repaired and saved and developed. Amen. Watch this. When you've eaten and you're full, beware lest you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. How many have been set free by the power of His presence? Praise. Don't forget what He's done for you. Remember that. Watch this. Just say, well, I'm young and I don't need to remember these things. Yes, you do. Ecclesiastes 12, 1. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Before difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them, you say, what in the world is that talking about if you're young? Let me tell you something. You ain't always going to feel as good and healthy as you do right now. How many is past that 50 mark and things feel different and things begin to change? God's saying, don't wait till, don't wait till you can't do anything for me to remember me. Get a hold of me now while you're young. You young people listening, remember this and call to... My, Gentlemen in the house, Isaiah 46, 8 says you need to man up. Remember this, show yourselves men. Recall to mind, O you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God, I love this passage. And there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. Here Isaiah is reproving Israel for going after other gods and God begins to speak and says, I'll show you how you know that I'm the only one true God. I'm the only one that knows the end from the beginning. I'm the only one that can speak ahead of what's going to happen. And I remember as a teenager being in doubt as to whether I could believe the Bible to be the Word of God. I began to study the ancient prophecies about Jesus and His first coming and how He fulfilled every one of them. Then I began to study the ancient prophecies of how Israel would be dispersed among all nations and then gathered again and be made a nation again. And what would happen and what nations would come against that little state of Israel and everything has happened exactly as prophesied in the scriptures. The Koran doesn't do that. Other the Sanskrit, other so-called holy readings don't do that. But only the Bible because it's the word of God declares the end from the beginning. Amen. That's incredible. Don't forget that God says. Remember he's the only God that can declare the end from the beginning and his counsel will stand. <laughs> How's it all going in? Let me tell you how it's going in. There's a new kingdom coming. Jesus Christ will rule and reign. And I'm going to be part of it. Matter of fact, I'm already part of it. And you can be too. Amen. And, 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 and it doesn't matter what it looks like is going to happen. How many understand nothing has caught God by surprise? And everything we see, including the turmoil of the earth, has been prophesied in the Scriptures. That's incredible. Remember that. Not only that, remember the warnings of God. Jesus, one of the shortest verses in the Bible, not the shortest, but one of the, is this. Remember Lot's wife. Who's she? Well, I'm glad you asked. There were wicked cities in the plains called Sodom and Gomorrah that endorsed every type of perversion, hate, killing, murder, any wicked thing 
they applauded. And God allowed them to be carried captive and he sent Abraham to bring deliverance and set them free. And instead of them appreciating that deliverance, they continued in their wickedness. There was a nephew of Abraham there named Lot. An angel came through because God was getting ready to destroy the cities and said, get your family, get out of this city. Whatever you do, don't look back. Lot's wife refused to listen. As Lot and his daughters and his wife fled the city, she turned and looked longingly back, appreciating more the wealth of Sodom than the deliverance in her family. And the Bible says she was changed into a pillar of salt, petrified right there for her disobedience. You say, Pastor, why is that so important? I'll tell you something. She had met an Old Testament appearance of Christ Himself. Melchizedek, king of righteousness, showed up when uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was delivered from captivity by Abraham. And Abraham walked up to the king of righteousness, which is what Melchizedek means. And Melchizedek offered communion, which we're going to do tonight in the Old Testament. He offered bread and wine. The king of Sodom offered the wealth of Sodom to Abraham. Abraham said, I won't have the wealth of Sodom. I'd rather pay tithes to the king of righteousness and commune with the king of righteousness. Hear me. Lot's wife met the king of righteousness and went back to her old ways. Remember Lot's wife when you're tempted to go back to your old ways. Y'all aren't so happy now. <laughs> Revelation 3.3, 3, Jesus gives this warning to the church. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. How many know, due to some liberal so-called preaching, there are people that are not looking for the return of Jesus at all. They're just looking to get richer and happier and healthier right now in this, pleasant, in this present world. And I'm not against prosperity and blessing and health, but I'm telling you, you better have your focus on things above, not just on things of the world. Because if you don't repent and you don't get close to God, you're going to miss what's about to happen. Jesus said, I'll come upon you as a thief and you won't be looking for me. Am I in the Word? Remember and repent. Look at it this way. James 1, 23-24. If anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. He observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. That's somebody who hears the Word and don't do it. I've seen these folks at Walmart. Say, Pastor, what are you talking about? They just got out of bed. They didn't even put clothes on. They're in their pajamas. They haven't combed their hair, washed the goo out of their eyes, shaved. They looked in the mirror and said, Ah, oh, well, I know I look rough, but who cares? How many understand that this is a mirror of God's Word? How many has ever come to church and the Word of God showed you just where you needed to clean up? Are you listening spiritually now? James is using a natural example to show you a spiritual example. You know what to clean up. You know what you need to do. You, you know you need to, you know, blow your nose and get the bats out of the cave. And come on, <laughs> comb your hair if you have any. <laughs> Wash your face. Amen. But you walk away from the mirror and forget what you look like. And you wonder why since you haven't brushed your teeth in three days, nobody wants to get close to you. <laughs> oh, thank God for deodorant and toothpaste. Amen. Amen. Say, Pastor, what's that got to do with me? We do the same thing when we come into church and the Word of God, or we open our Bibles at home, which I hope we do, and the Word of God shows us where we need to change, what we need to do differently, and we say, well, I'll deal with that some other time. Don't want to right now. You're a forgetful hearer of the Word. Elbow the person next to you and say, you need to remember what you hear about the Word. Amen. He goes away. Forgets what kind of guy he is. That's the Bible. And I want to say this too. I, I, remember this. Remember you're, you're representing Christ. Remember point number six, to be kind and sweet. 
Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Well, I don't smoke, drink, dip, or chew. Yeah, but you're as hateful as an old snake. <laughs> How many of you ever met people that were cranktified instead of sanctified? And they probably... Huh? I heard this on American Family Radio this week, and I don't know which minister even said it, but it just stuck with me. He said, people think that witnessing to the lost, please hear this. You have to know a lot of Bible scriptures and you have to have your theology all down pat. He said, what you really need to do, what would happen if church people would just be kind and sweet? And when people notice the difference, we give Jesus the credit. How many know we'd change Upshur County? We'd change Lewis County, Randolph County, whatever county you're from. If just those who claim to be Christians would remember to act like it and to be kind one to another. Ephesians says, loving one another, forgiving one another as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Folks, they think we're full of hate. That's what they hear on fake news all the time, that Christians are full of hate. We're not full of hate. We're full of the love of God. And it's up to you to show them. The other person next to you wouldn't hurt you to be nicer in Walmart. <laughs> None of us here are ever guilty of road rage, are they? Oh, Lord. Be kind one to another. Just, just listen. Hebrews 11, or Hebrews 13, 15, 16. Therefore, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. How many noticed there's a lot about praising God in these verses? To God, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. But don't forget, everybody say, don't forget. Yes. To do good and to share. Good and to share. Amen. <laughs> Give that young man a hand of appreciation. <laughs> For with... Which with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. I don't know about you, but I want him to say, that's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. How many want to hear that? Or daughter. Watch this. Don't forget to be generous. Acts 20, 35. This is a very unique verse. I'll show you what's unique about it here in a minute. I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you should support the weak. Support, everybody say support the weak. Somebody's struggling, they mess up, they do something they shouldn't. Do we kick them out or do we reach out and try to see restoration? And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Remember. You know what's unique about this? The Apostle Paul says this, this statement by Christ is not in the four Gospels. That means that probably the Lord Himself appeared to Paul and said, communicate this to the church. It is more blessed to give than to receive. If you're really Christians, quit being so self-centered and so stingy. Look for needs and reach out to meet the needs of those that have needs. Now don't you dare compromise on the principles of God's Word. We stand for life. We stand for biblical marriage. We stand for righteousness. But let's take a stand with love and grace and goodness to the lost. Amen. It'd be good if you'd just be good to other people in church, right? Amen. Pastor, how in the world am I going to be kind and sweet? How am I going to remember to behave like this? I'm so glad you asked. Because the answer is in the Bible. You have a helper. Amen? You need the Holy Ghost. You can't do this on your own. Watch this, John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus says, He will teach you all things. Now say it with me. And bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. Now I'm going to promise you this. It works. I'm out somewhere doing something and maybe even in the family something happens that wants to trigger my rotten temper and I have one. I used to tell my mom I lose my temper too much. She said, no son, you find it. <laughs> but how many will be honest and say a lot of times before you do the wrong thing, there's a little red flag, there's a warning. Now you know you shouldn't do that. How many of you push on through that and run that red light and crash at times? Come on. 
Am I the only one? You know what? The Holy Spirit will give your memory a jog. When you're about to be bitter and unforgiving, get offended easily, the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance the commandments of Jesus. Now you need to forgive them just like I've forgiven you. You need to offer them the grace I've offered to you. Getting quiet in here. Amen. Listen, since God has forgotten and forgiven your transgressions, be merciful and forgiving to others. Amen. Well, how, how, Pastor, how am I going to forget what he said, what she did? Well, that really hurt me. Do you think Christ wasn't hurt by crucifying him, by the rejection, by the spitting on his face, the stripes on his back, the spear in his side, the nails through his hands? What did he say? I'm just going to give them what they deserve. If he would have, 12 legion of angels would have descended and cleaned the planet off and you wouldn't be here today. But instead he said this, Father... Forgive them, for they know not what they do. I shared that with one lady, and she crossed her arm. She said, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Always find an excuse to hold a grudge, can't we? I challenge you to do this before the year ends, as you come and prepare for communion tonight, or even if you can't come. Purpose in your heart that you're going to turn loose of grudges and bitterness and unforgiveness. Amen. Amen. How can I forget negative things? Number one, the Holy Ghost helps you. Number two, and these numbers ain't on the lesson, but you can write them down if you want to. Change your focus. I'm telling you, the other day I was really battling depression. Don't look at me like that. I was thinking about some things that I see no resolution to and I see no solution to. How many have ever just, just really felt low? And suddenly the Holy Spirit said, change your focus. Look at the blessings I have given you, you ungrateful young man. God can call me young man because he's ancient of days. <laughs> Amen. Haven't I blessed you with a wife that loves you? Children that respect you? People that love you? You're not living in a cardboard box. I've given you a lot of blessings, son. You have a lot of good relationships in your life. Would you stop focusing on just the negative and start praising me for the good things I've given you and watch how I'll change other things then? Here's, here's your focus. You ready? Philippians 4, 8. And finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. How many know that grudge you're holding, that offense you're carrying? None of that fits this. Does it? Praise God. Do you know what God's been speaking to my heart? If you'll forget more of the past and failures of others, I'll help you to forget more of your past and failures. Amen. How many get tired of that thorn in the flesh, that messenger of Satan who wants to buffet you and remind you of all the wrong you've done in your past? Maybe if you'd quit holding others' past against them, you'd see how God's forgiven you of yours. Amen. Last point. Would the group come back up? Stand with me. How many believe it would be a benefit to you to start forgetting what God forgets in others and remembering what God remembers? Amen. Would it be a blessing? Yeah. Would it be a blessing? Last point I want to give you. Forget your failures. Forget your failures of the past. And remember you have been empowered for the future. I want to say that again. Forget your failures and remember you are empowered for the future. Well, I'm just going to be this way. It's the way my grandpa was. It's the way my dad was. It's a family thing. I'm going to tell you something. You have a new family. Amen. You have a new father. You have a new spirit within you. And there is victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Paul said it this way, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. 
Say this with me. Lord, help me to forget. Lord, help me to remember like you do. Amen. Praise God. Altar's open.